amazing friends you are welcome back to my channel i know you'll be wondering why i'm not showing my face today <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm tired okay so this will save me a lot of strength strength yeah so let us dive into the question just don't miss me too much yeah <laughs> so today we have an amazing question to solve we are asked to find the values of x if it's 1 to the power of sine x, sine squared x, plus it's 1 to the power of cos squared x equals 30, okay? And these are the range of our x from 0 to 2 pi or from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. All right, now let's begin. I want us to recall that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So, which implies that cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Okay? So, we are going to replace this cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. So, we now write it's 1 raised to the power of sine squared x plus 81 raised to the power of 1 minus sine squared x is equal to 30. Now, remember that 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So we can write this as 3 to the power of 4 raised to the power of sine squared x plus 3 to the power of 4 raised to the power of 1 minus sine squared x is equal to 30. Now remember that a to the power of m raised to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. So we can write this as 3 to the power of 4 sine squared x plus 3 to the power of 4 bracket 1 minus sine squared x is equal to 13. We have 3 to the power of 4 sine squared x plus 3 to the power of 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times sine squared x is 4 sine squared x is equal to 13. And now you can see we have sine squared x, 4 sine squared x, 4 sine squared x. So we can say let 4 sine squared x be equal to y, okay? So this becomes 3 to the power of y plus 3 to the power of 4 minus y is equal to 13. Remember that a to the power of m minus n is equal to a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. So we have 3 to the power of y plus 3 to the power of 4 divided by 3 to the power of y is equal to 13. So to remove this 3 to the power of y, let us multiply. both sides by 3 to the power of y, okay? So, if we do that, we will have 3 to the power of y bracket, 3 to the power of y over 1, plus 3 to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of y, is equal to 30 multiplied by 3 to the power of y. So, this time, this will have 3 to the power of y all squared plus when this multiplies this, this will remove this, we have 3 to the power of 4 is equal to 30 multiplied by 3 to the power of y. So, this here will have before that 
hit the subscription button and turn your notification bell if this is the first time you are seeing this lovely channel give us a thumbs up if you love what we are doing and don't forget please like comment and share yeah if you actually want this video to get to more people especially students that need it for their exam thank you so very much now we have three to the power of y three to the power of y we can say let's three to the power of y be equal to p okay so that means what we have here now is p squared plus three to the power of four plus is equal to 30 p so if we take this to the other side we'll have p squared minus 30 p plus now 3 to the power of 4 is 81 is equal to 0 so we need two factors of 81 that when we add them together we will get minus 30 okay and those two factors are minus 3 and minus 27 so we'll have p squared minus 3p minus 27p plus 81 is equal to zero so if we group them this and this they have p in common p squared divided by p we give us p 3p divided by p we give us 3 now minus what they have in common is 27 minus 27 Divide this, we are left with p, and plus 81 divided by minus 27 is minus 3, is equal to 0. So you can see that we have p minus 3 here, and p minus 3 here as well. So factorize again. When this is divided by this, p will remain, and when this is divided by this, minus 27 will remain, is equal to 0. Remember that if a, b is equal to zero, it simply means that either a is zero or b is zero or both are zeros. So it means that it's either p minus three is zero or p minus 27 is zero. So you can see our p is three and our p is 27 as well. All right, but this is getting more interesting because we are not asked to find P. We are asked to find X. But recall, I want you to recall, where we made this statement, let 3 to the power of Y be equal to P, okay? So we say, but recall, 3 to the power of Y is equal to P, okay? So when P is equal to 3, we have that 3 to the power of Y is equal to 3. And we know that 3 is something as 3 to the power of 1, right? By comparison, they share the same base, so their power is equal. So we have Y is equal to 1. Remember, we are looking for X. Similarly, when P is equal to 27 3 to the power of y will be 27 right so we have 3 to the power of y will be 3 to the power of 3 by comparison it simply means that y is also equal to 3 now we are looking for x let's recall again where we said let 4 to the power of 4 sine squared x be equal to y. This is what connects this x to y. So we are definitely going to use it. So 4, s, 4 sine x squared is what y. So recall that 4 sine squared x is equal to y. So it simply means that when y is equal to 1,
then we can say that 4 sine squared x is equal to 1. Now let's divide both sides by 4. We will have sine squared x is equal to 1 over 4. Now when we take square roots of both sides, we will have sine x is equal to square root of 1 over square root of 4, right? So this implies that sine x is equal to square root of 1 is 1 and square root of 4 is 2 plus or minus, right? Yeah. Now similarly, similarly, when when your y is equal to 3 so we are going to have that 4 sine squared x is equal to 3 so we divide both sides by 4 we have sine squared x is 3 over 4 so we take square root of both sides and we have sine x is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2. Okay. Now, if I'm trying to make sure this doesn't go in, I don't know what is happening. All right. Now, we can find the value of x here. Okay. Using the graph. Okay. The sine graph. Now, I'm not going to give you an exact value using this graph because it's going to be a sketch, but I can call the values that we are going to get when you plot the graph using your graph sheet, okay? Remember that your sine graph is in this form, right? You can see I'm already failing it because this place is supposed to be exactly the same thing with this place. But like I said, let's manage it, okay? So this is zero, this is half, that is 0 0.5, and this place should be one. Um, similarly, this will be minus 0 0.5, and this will be minus one, okay? So this is 180, and this is 360. Meaning that half of this should be 90 and half of this should be 270. Okay? Now, when sine x is plus or minus half, okay? So for plus or minus half, that should be 0 0.5. If you draw this line straight, okay? It's going to cut this curve at two points. So when you take it down to the degrees, you get a point here and you get a point here. Now, the two points that you are going to get will be x equals 30 degrees and x equals 150 degrees. Okay? So that is it for positive 0 0.5. Now, for the negative... For the negative, I'm trying to set this thing. It's actually going dim. I don't know why. So for the negative, when we have minus 0 0.5, if you also take a straight line, like I said, we are not going to get something perfect here, but you can do your graphing yourself. Okay, it's going to cut this at this point. And remember that this is supposed to go like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. And something at this point, okay? And when you... When you trace that, you are going to get 210 and 330 degrees, okay? So, similarly, when x is root 3 over 2, okay? When x is plus or minus root 3 over 2, when it is plus root 3 over 2, this is not up to 1, but it's very close to 1, okay? Yeah, so that means that... We 
assume let's assume this is at this point plus root 3 over 2 is at this point so you also take a straight line you are going to get two points when you drop it for plus root 3 over 2 you are going to get the first value of x to be 60 degrees all right and we are going to the second value of x will give you 120 degrees okay yeah if i'm not mistaken but that is what it should be now if we go to the negative aspect of it so let's assume this is the negative one if you draw a straight line you are going to meet two points as well okay so you trace them up up to pick your degrees and you are going to get x another value of x to be equal to 240 and 300 okay so i'm so sorry i couldn't give you the right like just do the drawing and it's very easy to get so these are the values of our x thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video bye